Hello class, Mr. Linder here. Let's take a look at Poissy's Law. So Poissy's Law helps us to understand flow rates through the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system. And really what it does is it helps us look at the physics uh, behind flow rates. So to start out with, let's talk basically about blood flow through the cardiovascular system. Blood flow is uh, related to the change in pressure divided by the resistance. So in this equation, we have BF, which represents blood flow, is equal to delta P. Delta P represents the change in pressure, change in pressure, and R represents resistance. And so what we can see from this equation is that blood flow is directly proportional to the change in pressure in the cardiovascular system, and it's inversely proportional to the resistance. So what does that mean? Basically, that means if there's an increase in delta P, then there will be a corresponding increase in blood flow. And that's a direct proportionality. If one thing goes up, the other thing goes up. If there's a increase in resistance, you'll have a decrease in blood flow. That means that there's an indirect relationship or an inverse proportion. So if resistance goes up, your blood flow will go down. So when we look at the cardiovascular system, what we're saying uh, essentially is that if there's a difference in pressure, let's say there's 100 millimeters of mercury at one end of a cardiovascular vessel and there's 50 millimeters of mercury at the other end of the cardiovascular vessel, that difference in pressure, that delta P, which would represent 50 millimeters of mercury, 100 minus 50 would be 50 millimeters of mercury then there's gonna be flow through the cardiovascular system. But what's going to impede that flow? The impedance of flow is going to be whatever the resistance looks like. So resistance can come in various forms. The resistance could be the vessel diameter. Okay, and so what is the size of the vessel? Vessel diameter. We can also look at the length of the vessel. That also can affect the resistance, length of vessel. And then we can also look at something called the viscosity. And the viscosity represents the thickness of the fluid. Okay, so higher viscosity fluids will have more resistance. Lower viscosity fluids will have less resistance. So viscosity is the thickness of the fluid. And so if we take a look at vessel diameter and vessel length and viscosity, we can better understand what resistance is. And so that's exactly what Poissy did in the 1800s. Uh, and we came up later on with this idea of Poissy's law. So what is Poissy's law? Well, let's look at it from a standpoint again of blood flow. And sometimes you'll also see the letter Q used. Q represents uh, flow rates, velocity of flow rates. So we could say blood flow or velocity of flow rates is equal to delta P times pi times R to the fourth power divided by 8 L and then the Greek letter eta. So this Greek letter is pronounced eta. Okay. Just like this Greek letter is pronounced delta. Okay. So delta P or difference in pressure. So we have this law where we're looking at flow through the cardiovascular system, or we could also look at it through the respiratory system, the same laws apply where we have delta P times pi times R to the fourth divided by eight L eta. 
So in this equation, let's define the parameters. Pi over eight, let's start with that, pi over eight represents a constant to the equation. Okay, so that'll always be constant in the equation. So if you're ever doing calculations, you would use the value for pi, 3.14, and then of course eight uh, is the constant on the denominator. We also have delta P, which we defined earlier. Delta P is the difference in pressure. And so I'll just write pressure again. R in the equation, or R to the fourth power, R represents the radius. So there we're talking about the diameter of the vessel or the size of the vessel. Okay? And we can talk about diameter of a vessel. Okay? And if we have a vessel, we can talk about the diameter of the vessel, or you can talk about the radius, right? the distance from the middle uh, to the edge. Okay? So we can look at R to the fourth power. So R to the fourth represents the radius of the vessel. We have L, which represents the length of the vessel. And then, of course, we have eta. And eta represents the viscosity. And so what you'll notice is that these are the parameters that affect blood flow. If we go back to our original blood flow equation, we have delta P. That's represented in Poiseuille's law. And then we have resistance, capital R, but resistance is affected by radius, it's affected by length, and it's affected by viscosity. And then we have pi over 8, which is the constants for the equation. And there's a whole derivation of Poiseuille's law. If you wanted to look into that, there's a whole lot of calculus involved in the derivation of Poiseuille's law. So what does Poiseuille's law tell us then about blood flow or even airflow through the respiratory system? How can we apply it to the physiology? Well, we can look at the relationships between blood flow and the various variables in the equation. So blood flow, okay, as related to delta P, we said earlier, if there's an increase in the change in pressure, then we're going to see a corresponding increase in blood flow. So that's a direct proportionality. Okay? If there's an increase in the difference in pressure, there's going to be an increase in blood flow. How do we know that? Well, look at where they are in relationships to the equation. We could put blood flow over one if that helps. Two variables that are on the numerator side uh, of the equation are going to be directly proportional to each other. <clears throat> so as your difference in pressure goes up, your blood flow will go up. Same thing for radius. If there's an increase in the radius, there will be an increase in blood flow. It's another direct proportionality. So as you vasodilate, okay, as the vessel gets larger, there's going to be better blood flow through the vessel. Length, on the other hand, if there's an increase in length for the vessel, there will be a corresponding decrease in blood flow. Why is that? Well, again, look at their relationships. Blood flow is on the top of the equation, whereas length is on the bottom of the equation. So when you have two variables that are on opposite sides, okay, then you're going to have an inverse relationship. So as your length goes up, there's more opportunities for blood to come in contact with the walls of the vessel, therefore more friction, so you're going to have a decrease in blood flow. So that's an inverse relationship. What about viscosity? If you increase the viscosity, Greek letter eta, you're going to see a corresponding decrease in blood flow. So again, we have an inverse relationship. As the thickness of the blood goes up, an increase in, in viscosity, you're going to have a decrease in blood flow. So the thicker your blood gets, the less it's going to flow through the cardiovascular system. That's something that we are concerned with with dehydration. Okay? The more dehydrated you become, so in dehydration, since your blood is predominantly made of water, the more dehydration you have, 
the less water in your cardiovascular system, so your blood begins to thicken. And so there's an increase in viscosity and therefore a decrease in blood flow. And so there's reduced oxygen and nutrient uh, distribution out to your organs. And that can be detrimental uh, to the health of your organs and to the health of you. You can also look at all of these variables on the reverse as well. So you can take a look at a decrease in a change in pressure, a decrease in radius, a decrease in length, a decrease in viscosity, and, and you can then look at the corresponding effects on blood flow. So it's a vice versa situation. So Poissy's law allows us to look at changes in pressure, changes in radius, changes in length, changes in viscosity that will ultimately affect blood flow or even airflow uh, in the respiratory system. Since length and viscosity, a okay, length and viscosity are relatively constant in the body on a day-to-day -day basis, right, we're not going to see really changes in length of vessels and normally we keep ourselves uh, well hydrated. So normally length and viscosity are relatively constant. Then the biggest variables that we're looking at are changes in pressure, delta P, and radius. And since radius is to the fourth power, then that plays a major role in blood flow and airflow through the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system. So when we look at the cardiovascular system, we pay a lot of attention to vasodilation and vasoconstriction as it relates to the cardiovascular system, constriction, because that plays a major role in the blood flow through the system. And same thing for airflow in the respiratory system. Only there we'd be looking at bronchodilation and bronchoconstriction. So let me give you an example. If you have a radius of one, that would be one to the fourth power, and we know that equals one. But if you had a radius of two, so we vasodilate, two to the fourth power, is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which gives you a value of 16. So we've actually increased the blood flow. We've increased blood flow 16 times, but we've only doubled the radius. We went from a size 1 to a size 2. So doubling the radius actually changes the blood flow 16 times. And that's because that variable is to the fourth power. So we see that this variable in Poissy's law becomes very important if we have constant length and constant viscosity and, and generally uh, a stable blood pressure in the cardiovascular system. So by vasodilating and vasoconstricting or bronchodilating and bronchoconstricting uh, on a regular basis, we can make major adjustments to cardiovascular flow, and airflow in the respiratory system. So I hope that helps. Take care.